Hello guys, in this video, we'll be solving one problem based on Gauss Seidel method. Now, let us understand what is the difference between Gauss Elimination, Gauss Jordan and as well as the Gauss Seidel method. So, in Gauss Jordan and Gauss Elimination, we were dealing with the matrices, right? But in this method, we'll be dealing with the iterations, okay? So, different initial approximation like values will be taken and we'll be doing iterations, okay? So, we'll be seeing that. Now, in this method you have to understand few concepts here so system of equation will be given okay you can see the question itself three equations linear equations are given involving three variables okay so same thing i have written the uh, what is that standard form now in this you have to understand that the diagonal coefficient you have to carefully understand here the diagonal coefficient what is diagonal coefficient that means in first equation the a1 value which is the coefficient of x in second equation the b2 value which is the coefficient of y in the third equation the c3 value which is the coefficient of z so you can observe here this is nothing but the diagonal what about this diagonal this diagonal coefficients a1 b2 and c3 should not be a zero or zero value okay it should not be zero coefficient should not be zero okay so when you write this matrices you will understand better so when i write this suppose i'll write here so 2 i'll write the coefficient 2 10 1 then 2 2 10 then 10 1 1 now here carefully observe if i see the diagonal it shouldn't be zero as well as it should be a large number compared to other coefficients okay that means if i see the first equation the x variable coefficient should be larger than other two variables so if you see here first equation let us see the question also so 2 is not larger than 10 and 1 here 1 is there so which should be there so it, it we have to rearrange the equation some of sometimes what they give they will uh, give in the jumbled way okay so we have to reorder it so this should be the x variable x coefficient should be larger than other two variables so this should be the first equation okay next that means this is the a1 value okay this is the a1 value next if i b2 in second equation b2 value should be that means coefficient of y second equation if i see anywhere you can see okay it should be larger than here 2 is not larger than other two variables right so, but here you observe 10 is larger than other two variables. That means this is the second equation. That means this is the B2 value. Now, C3 value, simple. Third equation you can observe here. This coefficient of Z is greater than other. Three. That means this is the third equation. That means they have not given in. So, this won't be the matrix. Correct? So, I'll write the equations properly. Now, one thing, only one thing you have to remember that in first equation, coefficient of x should be greater than other two coefficients in second equation coefficient of y should be greater than other two coefficients third equation coefficient of z should be greater than other two uh, coefficients okay so this is basically called the diagonally dominant system diagonally dominant system why because i'll, I'll tell you diagonally dominant system so let us now draw this metric uh, uh what is that reorder uh this equations okay first so let me just write first equation is 10x plus y plus z is equal to 12 right second equation is 2x plus 10y plus z is equal to 13 third equation is 2x plus 2y plus 10z is equal to 40 now the thing observe carefully so i will try to see here first equation coefficient of x is greater than 1 1 correct and uh, not the sum okay just to separately you have to see coefficient of y is greater in second equation coefficient of y is greater than other two coefficients third equation coefficient of z is greater than other two coefficients okay that's why i have rearranged it if i try to make the matrix of this separately this only this part so this will be 10 1 1 2 10 this will be 1 then 2 2 10 observe carefully this diagonal you can see this diagonal elements 
are nothing but th that's why i said this is a diagonally dominant system because the diagonal elements are dominating that means it is greater than other coefficients you can observe correct it is the greater number one more thing it is not necessary that it should be same number 10 10 10 it is not necessary okay that is not condition that is not considered as the condition of this gauss seidel method okay it can be any number but it should be greater than other coefficients now let us proceed with the method of doing this after writing these three equation next step is that in first equation take x on one side and others on the rhs side so this will be x is there then 12 12 minus y minus z then this 10 will go that side so 1 by 10 i can take correct in bracket 12 minus y minus z okay next in second equation which variable i'll take i'll take y dominant dominant one you have to consider so again the uh, constant term is 1 by 10 then what is left out 13 minus uh, what is that here 2x minus z is there next z term i'll consider here again 1 by 10 14 minus 2x minus 2y simple 2x minus 2y okay one more thing it is not necessary it should be all uh, the all the terms should be 10 same number or the same number it is not necessary next next we'll go for the first iteration okay so for first iteration we have to consider the initial approximation values initial approximation value now the thing is that sometimes in the question itself they will give you the values and they will tell you that they have to do this much iteration four iteration three iteration like that okay for this uh, for this question we are just considering the initial value if they don't give you have to consider so all for all the initial approximation basically means x of 0 y of 0 and z of 0 whatever the variables are involved now i'll consider x of 0 as 1 sorry 0 i'll consider it were for the easy easiness and y of 0 0 Z of 0, 0. You can consider any value 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, anything value you can consider. It doesn't matter. At last, you will arrive at the same solution. Okay. Carefully observe. First iteration will go for first iteration. In first iteration, what will happen? See, these three equations you have to see. Just these three. Forget about whatever we have written earlier. Okay. Now, in these three equations, first iteration basically means x of 1, y of 1, z of 1. Remember this. First iteration means x of 1 you have to find out then y of 1 z of 1 so x of 1 becomes 1 by 10 same equation okay 12 minus then y of what i'll write y of 0 minus z of 0 okay the thing is that here remember the values you are writing that should be the previous calculated value or previous given value or we can say in other words the latest value okay you will get to know so why am I writing y of, see y of 0 value we have considered, z of 0 value we have considered, correct? So I can write it here y of 0 and z of 0. So this becomes, so I will write it here itself, 1 by 10, 12 minus, what is y of 0 value? It is nothing but 0. So 0 minus, here also 0. So 12 by 10, right? So what is 12 by 10? So it is equal to 1.2. So x of 1 value we got next y of 1 y of 1 equal to 1 by 10 13 minus 2 of now remember x of what i'll write x of 0 or x of 1 i'll write x of 1 why because i have the latest value of x of 1 see x of 0 i i, I had 0 it is the value value is 0 but the thing is that here i got x of 1 value as 1.2 right so latest value or the previously calculated value or rate that means i'll write x of 1 latest value of x it is x of 1 minus z of do i have x z of 1 no i don't have z of 1 i have only z of 0 see we have not calculated z of 1 so i'll write z of 0 itself simple that is equal to 1 by 10 13 minus so what this becomes uh, 2 into x of 1 what is x of 1 1 point minus z of 0 it is 0 so this becomes 1 by 10 13 correct 13 oh so i'll directly write the value no need for simplification and all so 
So directly I have calculated the values. It is 1.06. Okay, you can just put it in the calculator and simply calculate. Next, z of 1. So now I will calculate z of 1. It is equal to this equation. 1 by 10, 14 minus 2. X of what I will write? What is the latest value I have? X of x of only 1 I have. X of 2 I don't have, right? So x of 1 only I will write. Minus 2 of 2y. Y of what I'll write? Y of 0 I have to write or Y of 1? I have to write Y of 1. Why? Because it is the latest value. See, Y of 1 I got. Okay. So, I'll write Y of 1. That is equal to 1 by 10. 14 minus 2 X of 1. X of 1 is 1.2. Minus 2 of Y of 1 is this value. 1.06. Correct. So, after calculating, I get the value as 0 0.948. Okay, so I got all the three values x of 1, x of uh, y of 1 and z of 1. So this will be the latest values. Okay, next equation when you consider. So the first iteration completed. We have calculated x of 1, y of 1 and z of 1. Next we will go for the second iteration. Let us go for second iteration. In second iteration what you have to find out? You have to find out x of 2, y of 2 and z of 2. Simple. You have to find out what? x of 2, y of 2 and z of 2. So first we will go for x of Two. Right. The same equation. We are not changing any equation. Same equation only. We have to find out x of 2. So this will be 1 by 10. 12 is the 12 minus. Y of what should I write? See, I have written all the values here. Uh, this is was the initial approximation. Then we got in first iteration values I have wrote here. Okay. So y of what is the latest value of y? Y of 1, right? So I'll write y of 1 minus z of what should i write z of 0 or z of 1 z of 1 i got the value so z of 1 simple so it is equal to 1 by 10 12 minus y of 1 value it is 1.06 this one minus z of 1 0 0.948 so at last you will get i have calculated the values you will get 0 0.9992 so this is the value you will get now y of 2 y of 2 is equal to same equation 1 by 10 13 minus 2 x of 1 i have to write or x of 2 x of 2 latest value so x of 2 minus z value it is z of 1 z of 2 i don't have okay that's why z of 1 so again 1 by 10 13 minus 2 into x of 2 x of 2 this one only 0 0.9992 minus z of 1 this one 0 0.948 okay so this is how we have to calculate now i have already calculated the value of this this is 1.0054 so y of 2 also we got now z of 2 now one more thing i should tell you that till how many iterations you have to do okay till which step you have to do okay let's say a simple thing that uh, you can observe whenever the two iterations that means previous iteration if you consider first iteration and second iteration, you have to compare the values of x of 1 and x of 2, y of 1, y of 2, like that you have to compare. And you have to see whether, whether they are identical or not. Okay, simple logic I will tell you here. That means you have to see whether the um, x of uh, 1 uh, and x of uh, what is that 2, whether it is identical or not. Like that y of 1, y of 2, whether it is same or not, identical in the sense, same or it is approximately same or not. If, it, if both are same values, all the values, all the variable values, then you can stop in the second iteration because that is the last iteration you have done. So basically when you do one iteration, you compare with the previous iteration values. If they are identical or the same, stop it there. If they are not identical, then go for next iteration. You can do many iterations. You can do 4, 5, 6, 7. It depends on you. Okay. Sometimes they will give you in the question itself. Do 4 iterations and all. Z of 2 becomes 1 by 10 again the same thing 14 minus 2 x of now thing is that what is the latest value of x of 2 right minus 2 into y of 2 is the latest value correct so this becomes 1 by 10 14 minus 2 into x of 2 into x of 2 what is x of 2 value 0 0.9992 minus 2 into y of 2 value 1.0054 so after doing this uh, calculation you will get the value as 0 0.991 okay this is our calc i have calculated the value so it is 0 0.991 okay
Now we have calculated all the values second iteration. Now we'll go for third iteration. Now let us go for the third iteration. So basically at least you have to do minimum three iterations. Okay, at least you go for three iteration. Then you start comparing. <coughs> That's it. So let us go for third iteration. Okay. So again the same thing. X of three you have to find out third iteration means X of three, Y of three and Z of three. Same equation. 1 by 10, 12 minus y of what is the latest values? You have written all the values. This was the initial first iteration, second iteration. So y of what is the latest value of y? It is y of 2. y of 2 minus z of what is that? 2, right? So that is equal to 1 by 10, 12 minus y of 2 value is 1.0054 minus z of 2 value is 0 0.991. Okay. So uh, the last value will get it as 0 0.996 so x of 3 we got next to y of 3 again the same thing 1 by 10 13 minus 2 into x of which value I will take I will take x of 3 latest value minus z of latest value of z is it is nothing but 2 itself equal to 1 by 10 13 minus 2 into x of 3 0 0.996 minus z of 2 0.991 so what uh, value i'll get i'll get 1.0002 okay next uh, z of 3 i have to calculate which is equal to same thing okay which is the same thing so i will just okay fine so 1 by 10 14 minus 2 into x of what is that 2 into x of the latest value is 2 minus 2 into y of latest values uh, 3 right sorry uh, not 2 sorry sorry it is x of 3 latest value x of 3 here y of 3 so put the substitute the values so this be, this becomes uh, 1 by 10 14 minus 2 into x of 3 value is 0 0.996 minus 2 into y of 3 value is 1.0002 so the calculator I have calculated the value it is approximately equal to 1.00000 like that it goes okay so if you compare third iteration so at least minimum you have to do third iteration so if you compare the second iteration values and third iteration value what you will get so I will just write it over here itself echo x of 3 what is x of 3 0 0.996 then y of 3 it is uh, how much you are getting one point this one right one point zero 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 two z of 3 how much you are getting it is one it's one itself one point zero 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 one so if you observe two uh, both the iterations what you understand so it is z see at approximately they are identical right same zero point nine 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 something here also one point zero zero five four here one point something here this one 0 0.991 here it is 1 okay if you want you can go for the fourth iteration also if you want you can go for the fourth iteration also there also you can calculate and verify because if you go on doing the iterations you can uh, confirm that this is the exact value that is the benefit if you go on doing iteration like fourth to fifth iteration so you will exactly get to know that the, this is the exact value okay so what I'll do, I'll post the uh, fourth iteration on the screen itself. You can see fourth iteration values and you just compare with the third iteration. You will get to know that the values of X, Y and Z, what is that? Values of X. So it I can consider what is the value of X? 0 0.996, it is approximately equal to 1. Y value, what is that? It is 1 itself. What is the Z value? It is equal to 1 itself. Correct. So I got all the values. So I'll just uh, what I, you can do. You can go for the fourth iteration also. Try once. Okay, fine. So this is the values of x, y, and z.